So Psalm 119, and we're going to be reading from verse 25 onwards this week. And the psalm, the portion of Psalm 119 begins with this. Daleth, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. David, as he's writing this psalm, is pouring out his heart to the Lord and he's um, making known his spiritual condition. Genesis 3.19 says this about man after the fall. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. David's asking the Lord for a personal revival to be brought back to life, so to speak. It's the plea of David. He felt so far away from the Lord. We know how David's life was in the Bible. He was a man after God's own heart, and yet he strayed, he wandered. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, quicken thou me, quicken to make alive, to bring to life according to thy word. The word of God brings life. It quickens. Only God can create life. Only God can raise the dead. And only God can quicken us when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. 26. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. That's the Lord. Teach me thy statutes. I have declared my ways. David made, made known his state, his thoughts, his dreams, everything about him to the Lord. He declared it to God. And that speaks of the heart of God towards us. God wants fellowship with us. He wants to be involved with everything we're doing. He wants to know all of your problems and struggles with the flesh, with the world, with those around us. I've declared my ways and thou heardest me. The Lord hears us. Teach me thy statutes. We want to understand. We want the word of God to speak to us personally. We want it to be our guide, our counsellor. Verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy, of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. As I've said, David is praying to the Lord. He wants knowledge. He wants understanding. He wants discernment. He wants to understand the word of God. He wants to be taught about himself, about life, about what he wants to be doing each day. And we want all these things. We want to walk with the Lord. And as we do, like David, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. A spiritual Christian will talk a lot about the Lord and about what he's doing and about what he's done for them. And we ought to want this for ourselves. We want an abundant Christian life. Verse 28, my soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. David, as I've said in verse 25, he feels at rock bottom. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. He feels way down low. My soul melteth for heaviness. I think about the Lord Jesus Christ. We read in Isaiah 53 in verse 3 uh, that he was all too well acquainted with this heaviness. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. We think about the heaviness the Lord felt, particularly at Gethsemane, alone, faced with the prospect of having to bear the sin of the world, your sin and my sin. We think about what he went through at the cross. And whilst we can never fully understand or comprehend just exactly what the Lord chose to go through, we can certainly feel uh, heaviness in our souls as we go through this life. Guilt can weigh us down over our sins, past and present. The things happening in the world can weigh us down. The things happening to those we love can cause our soul to melt for heaviness. Oftentimes we feel powerless and defeated, useless, good for nothing. 
and David, the very king of Israel, he was no stranger to these feelings. My soul melteth for heaviness. Can you relate to this? Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. That's the solution. When, when you're feeling like this, when you're feeling in the dust at the bottom, you're melting for heaviness, you're weak, you're pressed, you're weighed down. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. You need to feed on the word of God. You need the Lord. Verse 29, remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. In your Christian life, you're going to have to make a choice pretty early on as to what you're going to follow. Are you going to continue following the truth? You'll have received the truth if you've been born again. Or will you err into deception and lies? The world's full of it. Which one do you want? The truth above all costs or a comfortable lie? And David chose the truth. He wanted to know the Lord more. Verse 30, I've chosen the way of truth. And I hope we all have as well. I hope we're all born again, to, born again today. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Are you walking in the judgments of God? Do you follow after what the Lord approves of? The Lord has made many decisions for you if you're in the word of God, if you're reading it regularly. It will guide you in everything that you're doing. And the final verse, sorry, there's two more verses. Verse 31 and verse 32. I've stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. David walked by faith and he stuck unto thy testimonies. And we stick to the King James Bible. We don't depart. We're not going to give it away. And again, this is something perhaps we can relate to. O Lord, put me not to shame. We, we think in, in our lives, you know, our families, our old friends, our old associates, once they find out we're saved and that we're serious with the Lord, they, they think we've gone crazy. They think we're, uh, we've gone off the deep end. And David's asking the Lord, put me not to shame. You know, I'm, I'm trusting in you, Lord. I don't have all the answers. I'm just going to do things your way. I'm following your word. I'm believing your promises. Please, Lord, come through for me. Put me not to shame. And that's oftentimes how we feel amongst our families. We don't want to be put to shame. Verse 32, I will run the way of thy commandments. I'm going to follow you, Lord, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. You see, David was a very spiritual man in what he prayed. When thou shalt enlarge my heart. I wonder what our hearts are like today. Are they cold, frosty, small? And what are they set upon? What is our affection centred upon? Amen. <laughs>